There are a lot of uh, sculptures, but the, the most important is the Davide. Copy of Davide? Yes, yeah. copy of Davide, because uh, the original is uh, yeah. into a box yeah. uh, to protect uh, From against the tourists, the <laughs> people and the, the time. I've heard some rumors about your Prime Minister a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Our Prime Minister, when goes uh, in other country mm -hmm. in important uh, political events, he does uh, absurd things, he, he does jokes, uh, he, he does a lot of things uh, <laughs> not good uh, for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, the people of other, can of other country think uh, that uh, we are out of our mind because uh, oh, the yeah. Prime Minister really, uh, really bad, really strange, uh, really inappropriate. We have this uh, Prime Minister since uh, 17 uh, years oh, and uh, yes, a lot of time because uh, he controls uh, the television and the mass media in Italy mm -hmm. and so uh, for a lot of people it's difficult uh, uh, to understand the real situation of this car, you know. Something must have is changing negative. now. We have a lot uh, of people that uh, use the internet, uh, so so social media and uh, use for for political uh, opportunities. Uh, social media maybe is the future for us because uh, social media is uh, free to political influences and the uh, influences of the lobby. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I hope that uh, social media will become the most important uh, uh, mass media. Our group uh, is called Ripomax. We do a journalism uh, focus on uh, Arab view, the, the, the young view to facts, to politics, to what's happening uh, in our society. We do videos, photographies, articles. We interview the mayor of Florence, the president of Tuscany, and a lot of uh, politicians and famous people. Why did you decide to study political science? First of all, because uh, of interest. 
and uh, we'd like to judge better our society and uh, criticize uh, what, what is not uh, good uh, at all and to improve uh, our knowledge. Personally, I'd like to enter in the political life of my little country, uh, Pontassieve. <laughs> exactly. in Italian, Ponte Santa Trinita. Here in Florence there are a lot of bridge, but this old bridge, Ponte Vecchio, is the most famous bridge. This is our school, it's a very big school. We study uh, anthropology, uh, psychology. pedagogy, psychology and uh, a lot Social of things science. about uh, the men. We are in the last year, so we have the exam. Here uh, a lot of uh, young go away, go in England because uh, the English is the, the principal language. So mm -hmm. if you stay in England for two, three, one year, you study English. No, you can <laughs> learn about the English language and mm -hmm. then you can work in England. So it's an opportunity. Would you leave Italy? Uh, I think that uh, is the last solution. Because uh, before I want to try to go at university and then if I find a, a real good university that I like, I stay here. The experience of uh, Reformax uh, begin when um, uh, her mother, uh, she knows uh, Alessandra Riccardo that founded a group of journalism and uh, we can uh, participate. We can uh, talk uh, to all, all the young people and say something about uh, our life and uh, their life because they don't have a view about uh, the life in general but only their life, what is their life. It's important to create a general image of the young people in Italy. With this we can tell what we want and speak about our desire for the future. We want to show that also the young can speak, can tell the city and can create information. I have a fear of the, the future, but um, uh, I want to change this future, so I, I think that um, it's possible to change a so positive future, and so I participate to Ripple Max for, uh, for this, no? for to change uh, the future, so for, uh, for don't um, have a fear of the future. Now, Stuggy, yeah. now, can you tell me what this place here means for you? Uh, well, actually, this is the homecoming place. Like, um, this is the central station over here. Yeah. There's the dome. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, what does, does it mean to me? Like, when I'm away, I'm often on the road. And, um, I don't know, when I come back, I'm always on the central station. And then I look in the dome and I really feel like, I'm, I'm finally at home. You're you know? at home. Yes, yes. Is, 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 is this like the only place where you feel really like... Actually, yes. Yes. I don't know why. Uh, I, I wasn't born in here. I didn't grow up in here. I live in here like three years now. Mm -hmm. It's like really... <clears throat> how you say it? Uh, I really like it that uh, uh, the feeling when I look in the dome, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like always looking like this. And then I'm like... 
you know, like a little bit relaxed and, and I'm like easy. I often ask myself how I see myself, like for example, I have been a lot in the Philippines and my mother is from the Philippines and, and then I was asked, like, because when I'm in the Philippines mm -hmm. then they say that I'm the German one, but when I'm in here then they, they say, say I'm the Philippine one. So I really had a long, long, long thought about what am I? In the end, I think I'm more German than a Philippine because I'm thinking in German, my mentality is German and mm -hmm. so, so I'm a more German girl. I love Philippines, that's no question. Where did you grow up? In, in Germany? In south of Germany, it's yeah. called Tübingen, which is close to Stuttgart. Yeah. That's why people are calling me Stuggi, because Stugi. Stuttgart is uh, called Stuggi Boogie Town. <laughs> so since then it's my name, and now it's my artist name. Please tell me where to go. about us is uh, we both want to achieve something which is not the common job like everybody has like you want to do interview stuff and you want to do something with media the same goes for me I want to do something with media mm -hmm. not an interviewing thing but with filming you got declined from university but your dream the was to be a, become a filmmaker so yes the most how do you thing, cope with that the most thing I was disappointed was that I was declined by the university I wanted to go like two times without a reason giving. It was three months of work. Then somebody says, Your work is crap. Your Sorry. work is crap. How do you feel? Of course, I was depressed. And after the second declination, I was like, OK, now I don't know how, how to go on. So I already felt it fell into, in, into a deep nothing. You, you felt? I really, yeah, because I really thought I'm going, this is it now. And I'm going to be uh, accepted. And then, to get a declination when you ex expect because it was so good it was your work for more than three months and you're so sure to get in and then you get you won't get in but but what what do you tell like to the other people you work with because you know a, a lot of youngsters and creative people dream to go to go to a certain school so what do you say to them like keep on doing your thing don't uh, yeah, don't let yourself hold back from anybody because you are the one who's, who's doing your, your, your life. I never ever had so many sleepless nights The baddest feeling ever of all times That experience opened my eyes I never ever said so many goodbyes Goodbye to my past, goodbye to the Yeah, Alessandro ja. Ik zie de zon opkomen en ook weer ronde gaan. Ik zie de sterren toven vanavond. Ik start twee jaar before. Mm -hmm. I was in the project Roots and Roots. Yeah. I started to make some clips, not video clips, but interviews and something like this. Mm -hmm. One and a half year before, I start to shoot video clips with rappers from Cologne. Okay. First, I start with friends. By the time my name get famous and my clips from all parts of Cologne ask me to shoot with them. Jong, kom kijken op de markt voor een redelijke prijs. Verkopen we bijna alles. I have two projects. One, Bijna's Production. I produce video clips with rappers I want to. And I have also Mein Bezirk. It's like um, every rapper show with a video clip his part of Cologne. There was a fight 20 years before. It's not really a fight, but they don't like each other because every part of Cologne has a crew and they want to show, yeah, we are the strongest and something like this. Now I shoot 20 rappers and my drive in this project is to get unity. Do you think that you're able to unite them? Yes, I think it's, it's possible years? because I think they want to make tracks together or maybe also uh, video clips, but is they can ask each other because then there are the... The one is less. More yes, oh the yes. Other one. You ask me and not, not I ask you and something so like this. So you're a bit, um, how can you say, you're in the middle. Yes, I'm in the middle and I want to, to, I want to bring them together. With music. Yes, with I music guess. and videos. Jong, kom kijken op de markt voor een redelijke prijs. Verkopen we bijna alles. Ha. En neem een kijkje op de markt. Van alle markten thuis en je snapt het. Ja. En jong, kom kijken op de markt voor een redelijke prijs. Verkopen we bijna alles. 
En neem een kijkje op de markt. Is it this as work or is it more like free time we you spend? I think uh, it's more than work because I do professional clips mm -hmm. and I get money for it. And some of these are, for example, show in MTV in Africa or show on famous internet site in Germany. Comes on fun. Yeah. My Bezirk, the other project, mm -hmm. it's also work because I have to edit every week a clip and to release every Monday a clip. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I have I go also go to school and yeah, I just go to school, do my stuff there and then I go home and make my media stuff. <laughs> My father and my mother support me most. I have uh, much tolerance because for example some days I come back home at 12 o'clock, sometimes later. Also when I have school or something like this and have to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, they say, okay, you do it for your, for your future and it's okay when it's not every day or something so like that. So you get good support from home? Yes, for example, my father, when I have to carry a lot of stuff, then he drives with his car when he has time. I think it's, uh, it's much support. It's a good thing, Je zei dat eel zei we bouwen die brug. We timmeren aan de berg en die brug wordt het via dut. Vliegens vluggen groeit. Can you tell me what is your dream to be? I think my dream is uh, to earn a lot of money with it. But um, with what? With with making uh, videos or films or something like that. But to have fun with it. You really wanna to earn money but also have fun. Met lege handen van alle markten thuis. We handelen in beats en flows. Kom een keer een kijkje nemen. Ja, er is genoeg te koop. Er is een hoop geschreeuw en concurrentie. Degene met de luidste keel die maakt de meeste centen. We laten ons niet kennen. We redden onszelf prima. Kom maar kijken of je komen kijken wil. Ask just a regular Swedish guy, he would say that this is the hood, but I don't think it's the hood. Okay. Like I'm born and raised over here, and I know I know how it is here. Why do people actually think that this place is dangerous? I mean, do there's a lot of youngsters yeah. over here, and most of them they're not like ethnic Swedish. Okay. And to be honest, if you look at like uh, statistics, they got a lot of crimes here. Really? Yeah. Husby got 38% people that's not working in our age, between 15 and 24. And that's okay. one of the reasons that they call this the hood. I see a sign called Disco there. Yeah, so. it was the local pub. It's not a disco, it's like a local pub in Husby. Yeah. They shut it down like two months ago because it was too many youngsters who played. You know the machines? Like yeah. the jackpot and stuff. You got a local pub in, in your neighborhood too? We got a lot of pubs yeah. there. You yeah. drink a lot in German, huh? The yeah, Germans like to drink, they love to drink beer. How old do you have to be to drink there? You have to be 16. Uh, Sweden is 18. Yeah. This is where the magic happens. Yeah. Harakat, yeah. Harakat means movement okay. in Arabic. Okay. But in, in our hood we call Harakat, like if, if a big thing happened, like a nice thing, we call it Harakat. Mm. So that's where the name came from. This is the room where we have lectures every other Tuesdays. We had like writers here, famous writers from Sweden. Nice. Uh, ministers. One time we had a, an imam, a rabbit, and a priest. They were discussing religion, or the society in, in their own religion. Like, uh, the priest talked about this uh, society from his point of view, and uh, the imam did it in his way, and the rabbi too. It also looks like a concert hall. And when I, me and my friends had a concert here yeah. for the parents, I was like seven years old. I was standing here and singing Backstreet Boys. <laughs> yeah. Nice.
just make a phone in. Okay. If you ask me, I call it the Red House, because I don't like the White House. Man. But yeah, this is where the other magic happens. So let's go inside. So yeah guys, now we're in Megafonen. This is one of the main reasons why we started. After the murder of uh, Romario, local profile, uh, the media uh, just went to Uspi, to our neighborhood, just to check out what really happened to the murder. Uh, who stabbed who? Who did what? How do you react? What are you gonna do now? What's gonna have to aftermath? What's gonna happen and stuff? So we decided in Megafonen to do our own uh, internet newspaper where we just talk about good things that happens in Husby. So we went to just start writing stuff about the positive things in Husby that happens. But a year later, we went from a newspaper in the internet to an organization for young people. Mm -hmm. We wanted to put our name on the map so everybody knows that little Husby from Sweden is like democratic utopia. The government doesn't do that much when they are doing something here in our neighborhoods, they forget the most important thing to ask the people who lives here what to do. What I find so amazing about Megafonen and about you guys here, because I haven't heard of any group, any local group in uh, Cologne or in Germany, I don't know, <coughs> of young people first getting together, starting something. When I was a younger teenager, I practiced football a lot and my biggest dream was to be a football star and to make it in a team in Europe. But unfortunately, I injured my leg during a football game, so I didn't get the chance to make it to the top. I'm injured for the rest of my life, but I'm still happy though, I'm still happy. After the summer break that year, I got a phone call from Bashar. Bashar is one of the founders of Megafonen. He said uh, if he could meet me in Shista so we could talk about Megafonen and how we should work. He gave me the inspiration I needed. I felt I could devote some of my free time to help the other children here in Husby and make them grow up as better people. What do you think? What is going to happen in the future? In the future, I'll probably work with children. I am going to study at the university after the summer break. Mm. And uh, I'm aiming to get a social work degree. That's my biggest goal I got right now. There wasn't any good uh, social workers at school. They were always sitting on the offices, laid back, with their coffee. And they would never ever go outside to the children and play with them. I want to help the younger kids, I want to play with them outside. If they got any problem, I want them to come to me so we, so we can talk about it and solve the problem. I ain't gonna lie, there's a dark side in Husby. There are a, a bunch of young persons who commit criminal actions. They steal, they rob people, they use drugs. And uh, that's, that is why, one of the reasons I joined Megaphone because mm. I, want to, I want to change that. I want to change, I want to change the, the picture that mass, me, mass media have uh, brought to Uspi, that, that it is a dark and cold place. I want to give the people a choice. In the future, I want, I want them to say, should I leave Husby or should I stay Husby? Because now everybody wants to leave. And we're pushing forward to change the negative things about this neighborhood because it really is a great place, but we need to change youth's opinion about doing negative stuff that could affect them in the life that's coming for them. I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know This is the 
local government in uh, The Hague. And what do you do as a youth ambassador? We are with uh, 17 youth from uh, the city, all kind of parts in the city. We all have like uh, one subject. I'm from Europe, and you have others for healthcare, um, sports, uh, politics, <laughs> also. And they all give advice to the local government, uh, asked and unasked. So some of them ask us like, uh, "Would you please give us an advice?" And others. Um, we hear in the city if there's something wrong and we go give advice and ask. I don't know who I just met. We have uh, people from different kind of countries, like backgrounds, uh, so the, and also different kind of parts in The Hague. So we can have a, one good idea about um, the, the city, uh, about uh, things you think about, maybe because my parents' background is Tunisian, maybe I can talk more about my feeling as... Mm -hmm. um, so we have more a good idea to, um, to salute a problem. Is it difficult to speak with uh, people who work uh, like... Uh, In here? Yes. At the beginning we were like uh, working like three years to get uh, the politics uh, taking us serious. Right now they're taking us very serious and uh, we did uh, change some things, yes. I don't know. I don't know. The meaning is to have a good connection with the local politics, with the local government, because um, we, have you, we are a bridge between also the youth and the, and the local government. So if the youth can't reach the politics here, we can do that. I'm interested to help youth of my age in my city to get them maybe reach their dreams, just what I really want to do. So for me that's important. And politics it's like a plus with it. I don't know who I just met, cause I don't know who I am. But uh, your background. Yeah. What do you think about revolutions? I think it's very important to have a voice because I talked with the Tunisian people. They were very happy. Someone was crying because they felt like something get out of their shoulders and they could say something. Here we know we can say everything we want. In Italy, maybe not. So it's very important to make your point and somebody that there is somebody listening to your idea, to what you really need. And my dream is uh, to, as the Youth Ambassador of Europe, to get um, uh, youngsters in Europe more connected with each other, to know more about Europe so they know also their rights, just like we're doing right now, uh, talking about our feelings. So that's actually my uh, dream to achieve. I don't know, I don't know. Center in Rotterdam. This is the first day of summer school, Roots and Roots. Most times it's two, three weeks. Yes. And it's music, media and dance. Youngsters get the opportunity to explore their talents and make something together. If you're a musician, you're dropped with a lot of different other musicians and you have to make a band and write your own songs, write your own music. If you're a dancer, you're also with different dancers, you have to practice every day. End show is like an end dance, you can call it. The media team records everything and follows the dancers and the musicians, but the musicians also follow the media team. And the media team have the opportunity to make their own short movies, documentaries. And uh, have you studied here? I did, I did summer school in 2009 and 2010. I think the most exciting thing for me mm. in summer school was I did uh, the interview with, with George Clinton. George Clinton. After that I was like, I almost started crying. I was like, oh my God, oh yeah. my God, I'm never going to wash myself. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't work out with my career and stuff, I can say, well, you know, I interviewed the, the grandmaster of funk. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. it's always cool to say the summer school thing and no one doing it, that interview was for me like um, a, a mark point, I can say. 
then I decided, well, you know, I want to do this and I want to be a journalist. What is the journalist for you? For me, a journalist is just a storyteller. I don't think nowadays you really hear the, the true story. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to tell the, the story of the people, not the story that the media wants to tell. Before the big media always tells their story. But, you know, I want to tell, you know, you're living in war. How does that feel? And not some, some prime minister of war and somebody who studied war and talking about, well, war is uh, very, uh, it's very important and very bad. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. you know, you've been through war. Tell me about your story. I think that you are lucky because uh, you have this passion. Everybody has a passion, I guess, but I think it's a shame that not everybody gets the opportunity to, to, to know what their passion is and to, to explore. Yeah. Their, their passion because every, I think that every human being is talented. Everybody has this unique thing. Yeah. But the difference between passion and um, dream and reality. So if you want uh, something and you uh, spend your time and uh, your uh, um, skills for uh, realized it, it's so important. Well, uh, as you can see, I'm always blown away because the weather is kind of, well, Shitty, you can say, but I have uh, some magic in my pocket. I think, I think. Oh. And here we go. It's very sunny at the moment. And now we're going back. So, this is Rotterdam. Uh, very shitty weather. This is like one of the most famous places in Rotterdam. The, uh -huh. the cubicle uh, kind of spacing. It's very strange. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Back to the future, back to I don't know where. It's like a dream. A dream. <laughs> what is your dream? Yeah. My dream is complicated like this, this house. <laughs> your dream? Well, I hope to be a really good journalist in maybe 10 years and... 10 years? Yeah, well. well okay, time. wow. But I want to be, I want to go abroad. I, wanna, I don't want to stay in Holland. No? No. And where? I don't know, maybe traveling freelance. But in Europe or no? It doesn't really matter, you know, where the where the story leads me. Most itt vagyunk Pécsen, a Messesen, ahol, ahol a legtöbb roma lakik itt Pécsen. És akárhányszor, akármikor, akárhova megyek, én mindig lemegyek ahhoz a, a, a térbe, ahol a legtöbb roma lakik. Mert szeretnék ismerkedni velük. Ugye mindenhol, hál' Istennek ismernek minket több roma. És lemegyek, és, és ahogy, ahogy ők szeretnek engemet, én a hálámat így fejezem ki, hogy legyenek hozzájuk, ismerkedek. Beszélgetek velük, és szeretem én is őket nagyon, ahogy ők is engem, mert ahogy, ahogy velem ezt érzékeltetik. Mert ugye, amikor ismerik az embert, ugye, a zeném által is, mert ugye elsőnek a zeném által ismertek, meg ugye többen, utána kíváncsiak a személyiségemre is, hogy milyen vagyok, mint ember. Én nekem személy szerint a, a roma zene, az nekem az életem. Nekem ez a génembe van. Hmm. Én ezt soha nem tudnám elfeledni, soha, ö, soha ne, nem mennek a véleményből, mert ez, ez, ez én vagyok. Az én vagyok a zene, az az életem, annélkül nem tudnék élni. Mert ugye általában az ember a bánatját és az örömét az enyében mondja el. Hmm. Elénekli igazából ezt az egészet. De annélkül nem tudnék élni. Nekem ezt jelent a zene. The people in Hungary listen to music, yeah, the ethnic Hungarians. The question is, when I first went to the street, many people know me, and many people like my music. And in fact, I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going to be famous or not. I don't know if I'm going Ez mindenki, mindenki hmm. szereti, hmm. nincs különbség. Very nice, I like it.
Right now we are in uh, St. Istvan Square. This is the most popular uh, place in Pech. Here are the most of the youngsters. We hang on uh, when we finish the school, you know, then we drink something or, I don't know, talk with each other. I see and I'm listening I think about things that happen All of you like full <clears throat> Romas or you mixed? Uh, I'm mixed, yeah. I'm a mixed, I'm a half German, half Roma, but I I think I am a gypsy, a traditional gypsy man. You, you feel know? more like a gy yeah. gypsy? I like more the gypsy peoples. My family is uh, break up with the German side, you know. I know some gypsies too, where I live. Like, you you educated, no offense or stuff, but you educated, you speak good English, you're not dressed as uh, gyp typical gypsies. Mm -hmm. How come? Is it your own choice or does it come from like your home? or? Uh, we learn because we want to help. I want to help my family, you know, because they are un unemployed and uh, undereducated, you know. And uh, I don't want to uh, be an undereducated people or, or something, you know. I want to help my family because they don't have a job. How come they don't have a job? Because uh, they break up the school lessons, you know. Yeah. Okay. Is there a lot of gypsies? A lot of gypsies, yeah. Okay. Do you have like connect by internet or something with other gypsies around the world? Yeah, yeah. yeah? We have a website. Uh, What's it called? It's called kaskosan.com. What does that mean? Kaskosan means um, is, uh, who are you? Where are you from? This is a good website because uh, there are only gypsies, uh, I think. Yeah. It's, uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, the gypsy Facebook. A lot of gypsies, they marry each other like a, at a young age, at your age. Yeah, That's yeah. kind of normal. Mm -hmm. But you guys aren't married. We have a lot of kind of uh, gypsies. Mm -hmm. Somebody uh, stay in the traditional Roma culture, okay. you know. They uh, married in when they are 15 or 14. Sometimes the girl is only 12 years old and they marry. What I think personally is that for a little girl it's not so good to marry someone for a 13 year old girl to marry a 17 years old boy and live with him for like the rest of her life. And you know, what I really don't like about traditions is that there are people who say, oh my God, if you get divorced, you know, and you leave him because he's cheating on you or whatever, then no one else will want you. You will stay lonely for all your life. There are families which are like telling their daughters to marry only gypsy men and not to marry anyone from another race. But, you know, I think that as time goes on, you know, we're in 2011, I think that um, this is changing slowly, but changing. So people are getting more open-minded about this stuff. So I'm still young, I don't know anything, so I keep searching. Listen carefully to my mind and I find, find, find When I find, find, find When I find, find, find my inspiration great. We had this little book where we have our grades, you know, written under our names, yeah. you know And there, next to my name, there was the letter C You know, uh, in Hungarian uh, the word gypsy starts uh, with the letter C. And this was a sign uh, telling the teachers that I was a gypsy and that I'm different. Oh, shit. But did these things affect your grades? Uh, well, back then, no. I just didn't take it seriously. If you, if you look at the situation right now for gypsies, for example, in uh, Hungary, is it, is it, does it look like it's going to be better or worse? Uh, it's going to be worse. Worse? Yes, Why? because uh, we have a political uh, side. Uh, the it's a uh, it's called uh, Yobik. A uh, it's a it's a very 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 racism part of the politic. You know, they want to kill gypsies. You know, and uh, they will be much more stronger year of year. You know. And we we frightened of uh, this uh, this political uh, uh, side because uh, 
when they uh, come up of the top of the politics, you know, we we should go out of the the country. Or well, I don't. Aren't know. you doing anything to like stop it? We can't do something because uh, gypsies aren't in politics, you know. We still have a similar situation in Sweden, where we have a political party that they're also racist. They're growing and growing. Yeah, yeah. and they got into the government. Yeah, yeah. It's and the same here. Yeah, yeah same but here. we had a yeah. big, 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 huge demonstration. So we try to do something about it. Don't you think it's important that you do the same thing? Yeah, it's important. You're always stronger yeah. in a group. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> we need made the group, or I don't know what we should make to change this uh, situation. Simon. I know you, you have a lot of problems as gypsies in Hungary, and we have a lot of problems as immigrants in Sweden. But if you ask me, I want I want to stay in the country. I want to make a change where I'm at, instead of like make a change somewhere else. How do you guys do want, want to do? Do you want to move out or do you want to like make a change over here? Well, yeah, it's really complex and complicated because I want to do both. You want to do both? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of things that I want to try and travel around the world and maybe earn a living somewhere else, you know? But I also don't want to give up on life here. Ha el is megyek, akkor tanulni megyek el, és a, amit megtanultam, azt így szeretném kamatoztatni az orsz, a mm-hmm. saját otthonom. She says that um, the reason why she would uh, like to move for some years is because she wants to study, to actually know more and uh, expand her knowledge. And then she wants to come back here and uh, use what she learned. So she doesn't want to leave the country because uh, she's like, oh my god, I want to escape, you know. But she wants to get stronger and then come back and yeah, make a change. The reason why I would like to leave the country is because I don't see enough opportunities for myself. So I'm not running from, you know, all the racist people and all, all the close-minded people, but because I think that my family lives here. And, you know, maybe we have fights sometimes and, and sometimes we don't always agree with each other, but, you know, they're my family and um, I'm very uh, family-centered. So, you know, I really love my family and, and you know, because of this, you know, I'm still hesitating about moving out of the country because I would know it so much. This may sound a little bit stupid, but I think that with all the things that I love, I can overcome the things that I don't love. You know what I mean? I'm on top of the world, baby, I'm on top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> An old man, a silly man, a cocky man, An old stubborn, lovely man. You seem so quiet. When pretending you do not matter anymore Always stubborn and you Don't want to listen To the people of the time I said Just relax and please sit down When yet you want to keep walk around Always if you do not know anything But meanwhile, you have everything, everything, everything People do not know 
what you mean But you know what people think Pretend you do not know it all But now you know everything Observe, philosophize Enjoy ignoring Believing in the time that now we stand You're my old man You are my final stubborn man Da-da-da-da-da